student affairs is often seen like as a helping profession, right? So those of us who work in student affairs, we, we often enter the profession because we're in the business of helping college students. Um, and so what that means often is that um, we prioritize students' needs often above our own, um, above taking care of ourselves. We focus a lot today on like supporting students, on like faculty. I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the importance of like taking care of ourselves in this process too. Um, and, and that means like seeking counseling for ourselves. Like I've seen a therapist since 2015 to deal with the racial battle fatigue that I was experiencing because I wasn't showing up well for my son, for my partner and for my friends, right? And so I, I had access and resources and that it was important for me given those privileged identities that I hold to heal, to work to address that trauma that I was experiencing. So to me, taking care of ourselves as student affairs professionals, as educators is really, really important. Um, the other thing that I'll say is, and, um, and William um, spoke to this point multiple times around um, acknowledging what's happening in our society mm. is really important for student affairs professionals and for faculty. Like, you, like we can't just go into our classroom business as usual. We can't just go into an, an advising meeting as business as usual. Like business is not usual, um, right? Like events are happening in our society constantly. We have to acknowledge it because students are experiencing that. And when we go in business as usual, we minimize what might be happening in our society and how it's impacting them. And then the last thing that I'll say on this point is, um, at this point in our time, we are in 2021, we know that students of color experience racism. We no longer need students of color to share their stories of pain or trauma for us to believe them. The reality is like we know that exists and there are resources at our fingertips where we can read those stories in books, articles, journals, blog posts, at Twitter, Facebook, any place we can access those resources. So we need not expect students of color to continue to share their stories of pain and trauma and racism with us for us to believe them. When a student of color tells you that they experienced racism, your number one job in that moment is to validate that what they're experiencing is real. I hear you, I'm sorry you experienced that, what do you need? Those are the, that's the way to respond to them, not to minimize what they're experiencing over, um, explain it away, but again, to validate in that moment. And one book I'll recommend that I think is really important for this discussion is called My Grandmother's Hands, is around um, this notion of like working to heal from racial battle fatigue. So I wanted to be sure to put that resource out there for folks.